Does the spice saffron help against depression and anxiety? I really have to confess that I'm quite impressed by the sheer number of studies that have been conducted about the efficacy of saffron for treating depression and anxiety. There are so many studies that only in the past three to four years about six meta-analyses have been conducted on the efficacy of uh, saffron on depression. And in one of the biggest meta-analyses, which is also probably at the moment the most influential meta-analyses on this topic, about 23 single studies have been analyzed with all in all 760 participants. And if you hear these numbers, you can already guess that many of those studies must have been quite small. Because if there are 23 studies and all in all only 760 participants in all these studies, of course most of these studies must have had a very small number of participants. And another problem is that most of those studies have been conducted in the Iran, which on the one hand is not too surprising because the Iran is one of the pioneer countries when it comes to phytopharmaceuticals. On the other hand, about 90% of the saffron production worldwide comes from the Iran as well. So you could already guess that there is also some kind of conflict of interest, because if your country is very dependent from the production of this spice and it is a very fine important financial factor for your country, maybe you feel a little bit pushed to publish positive results. And indeed, the meta-analysis that I mentioned found some evidence for publication bias. So this is something to keep in mind. Nevertheless, if we just take a look at the pure effect sizes, the effect is the effect of saffron when it comes to treating depression or anxiety is very impressive. The average effect in this meta-analysis was uh, G equal 0.99, which is a huge effect for depression, and G equals 0.95 for anxiety. So two statistically really impressive, significant effects. And even if they just took a look at studies in which participants already were getting normal antidepressants like paroxetine or citalopram, even those participants still seemed to profit from taking add-on saffron. But to give you a better impression, let's not only take a look at the average effect in this meta-analysis, but also take a look at single studies. And there is, for example, the study by Tabeshpur and colleagues in which women who were suffering from postnatal depression, so they were depressed after giving birth to their children, something that is really quite common, right after the birth of your child, you feel very down. You don't feel the love for your child that you were expecting, and therefore you also feel guilty and more and more depressed. And one group of these mothers received 30 milligrams of saffron per day. So they were getting 50 milligrams in the morning and 50 milligrams in the evening. In the control condition, the other half of mothers were getting um, placebo pills, which were looking and smelling identically. After only four weeks, those mothers who had received the saffron pills felt much better they had less depression. After eight weeks, the effect was even stronger. After eight weeks, they felt much better. They had much less depression than the women who had just received the placebo pills. Quite impressive results. But as I said, those are small studies. In this study, there were 60 participants, which is not too bad, but more participants would have been very good. And also this study was conducted in the Iran like many other studies. So what about studies that were not conducted in the Iran and that had more participants? Luckily, there is a much bigger study that was conducted not in the Iran, but in Australia from scientists of the university in Perth. 
And in this study, which was not mentioned in the meta-analysis that I presented to you in the beginning because it was published afterwards, in this study they had 160 participants who were already receiving antidepressants like fluoxetine, like paroxetine, citalopram and escitalopram. So the scientists were interested in the question whether giving add-on saffron would increase the therapy effect of the antidepressants. And therefore, one group received, um, in this case, 28 milligrams of uh, saffron extract, um, 40 milligrams in the morning and 40 milligrams in the evening, whereas in the control condition, the participants received the same amount of placebo pills. The results of this study were, let's say, mysterious. Because on the one hand, it could be shown that when the medical professionals, the doctors, had to judge the therapy success, they said, well, in the saffron group, people improved from their depression on average about 41%. In the placebo group, only about 21%. So from their perspective, the saffron treatment was quite effective. But when the participants themselves had been asked, the picture was quite different because they themselves said, well, their depression had improved in the saffron group about 27% and in the placebo control group, the participants said, well, it improved about 26%. So there was just 1% difference, which of course was far from uh, statistical significant. So what do you do with these results? The doctor said the participants improved, but the participants themselves didn't realize that they improved. So the scientists say, and I'm not really convinced by that, they say, well, of course it's a dilemma. They agree that the results are somewhat mysterious, but they say, well, this is something that could be shown in other studies as well, that sometimes people with depression do not really have the feeling for their own improvement. And okay, this might be real to some degree, but for me, it's not really completely convincing. My first idea would have been that maybe the medical professionals had realized which participants had been in which condition and if they realized well this participant probably got the saffron extract they probably saw more of an improvement than in the placebo condition but on the other hand the scientists say well the study has been double blind and none of the medical professionals knew which participants had gotten the saffron extract and which participants had gotten the placebo. So it's very hard to figure out what was going on. And therefore, even though this has been a very good and big study, we probably will need some more of those studies until we can say with confidence that saffron is effective or not so effective. Nevertheless, the emerging evidence is quite interesting. And it's definitely worthwhile to, to conduct more studies. Of course, some people might throw in, well, even if saffron is effective, isn't it much too expensive? And it's true, saffron is extremely expensive. One kilogram costs about 2,000 if you get it very cheap. But at this point, you have to make sure that it's really pure saffron. And prices go up to about 30,000 euros for one kilogram of saffron. And the reason is that you need 150,000 to about 200,000 crocus flowers to get about one kilogram of saffron. And all this still up to today has to be done by hand. So this is what you pay for. It's really tough handwork. And if you look in countries like Iran, more often than not, there are children also involved in this work. So, yes, saffron is extremely expensive. But on the other hand, you only need very small amounts of saffron. Keep in mind that in the studies we discussed about 30 milligrams of saffron 
seem to be sufficient. So it seems possible to get the amount of saffron you need to treat depression for 60 days for about 25 euros. But of course the prices can vary. And I think this is okay, especially if it should turn out in bigger studies from scientists all over the world that saffron is indeed helpful in treating depression. And if it really should show add-on effectiveness for treating depression, if people are already receiving normal antidepressants, this might be very interesting. I hope you enjoyed this episode and if you want, we will see you next time.